A raft of wandering otters, and it is the 14th of April, and Paul and I are going to go out for um, some fresh air and a drive. And yes, as mentioned before, this is one of our coping skills. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is uh, get rid of the uh, idea that we are stuck at home. We aren't. We can actually get in the car and have a drive. Um, and uh, see sights, get fresh air. Um, uh, it's not a matter that we have to be at the house. We could go for a walk, but Paul hasn't said yes to that yet. I'm hoping maybe he will in the, in the near future. Raptor Wandering Otters, come see what we see. We're gonna try to go to Commercial Wharf 2 and see what we can see in Monterey. Join us. Okay, here we are at the Commercial Wharf 2. Uh, Paul requested to come here. I was kind of curious why. And he had a good explanation. Um, his explanation is, is that uh, he wants to see less businesses that are closed. Because the Tourist Wharf, obviously, there's plenty of unessential businesses there. Uh, first thing I'd like to see uh, go out of business are the candy stores. but. That's just a personal thing, I guess. I don't think the world needs more sugar products. Uh, I see somebody uh, sort of stealth fishing there. You're not supposed to be fishing anymore in the state of California, in case you didn't know. So what happened? For all, for all you schmucks that bought your fishing license, ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> Uh, the uh, governor has is issued a temporary ban on fishing, Why? private fishing, not commercial fishing. So actually, you, right now, the commercial fishing boats have been very active. I saw clusters of them this morning, actually, right over that way, straight where I'm looking. I saw clusters of them out fishing this morning. So I don't know if it's sardines or uh, mackerel that are running. Yeah, right. Holy mackerel, right? 
but uh, w between one of the two, uh, that's the big that's the big catch here in South Monterey Bay is uh, mackerel or sardines. Not not anything close to what it was uh, uh, when it was the uh, uh, huge business and all the canneries on Cannery Row were working, but. Uh, there you go. Wow. Oh. Huh. San Pedro. Huh. So there is the commercial wharf, huh? Pretty cool, eh? And of course, there's there's the harbor. Why are they going on temporary ban? I don't know. A lot of people think it's pretty doggone ridiculous that uh, the governor's doing that. But I think it has to do with when when people are fishing, they're clustered close together, and that can create a. Uh, uh, opportunity for the virus to spread so that's I'm sure that's the logic um, but I just uh, I want to get on a little bit of a soapbox right now uh, you can do uh, you can do some pretty horrible things in the name of safety and I think the the one thing that is America's greatest treasure is our Constitution and when you hear people are banned from going to their churches, um, banned from um, exercising their constitutional right, I get very nervous um, because uh, that kind of power in the hands of uh, uh, individual governors and leadership is very, very troubling. Now fishing, fishing is a privilege, just like driving. Did you know that? Driving is a privilege. You are not entitled to drive. So they can they could ban that if they wanted to, and that would still be within the Constitution. But uh, um, churches and other gatherings like that, I have real concerns about what kind of precedent that can establish, all in the name of safety. Okay, so let's let's be mindful that sometimes. Well, there's a famous saying that's attributed to uh, to Abraham Lincoln, no, Benjamin Franklin. And even though the context is all wrong and it's sort of misquoted or misused to use in this context, it still is relevant, and that is to paraphrase. Those who would give up uh, liberty for safety deserve neither. And I strongly believe that. Um, democracy is a complex, messy business. Um, and freedom in itself is a, a dangerous business. And when you try to separate the danger of liberty um, uh, the inherent danger of it because you have to fight for liberty often enough so when you separate those two and you make it sound so effortless like oh hey we're doing this for your safety I, I am very concerned about what can follow um, but anyway long story short the upside is, is there's cause to be optimistic that uh, uh, this may lighten up in the very near future. Um, um, Good world. Yeah, Monterey County is supposed to uh, lift its uh, shelter-in-place ordinance uh, uh, 
sometime uh, May 3rd. So that's we're we're anxiously awaiting uh, that. I know Paul can't wait because he's just been very anxious about everything. There is the harbor, and look at it. almost every boat is there now. If I had a small pleasure boat, I don't really see a big problem with the, the small private yachts and pleasure boats going out on the bay. I mean, that's almost like the ultimate social distancing, except for the fact that there will be times when they need to um, uh, come in uh, and make contact with other people if they are going out. So Now, there's the old fisherman's wharf the tourist wharf and I see a little bit of signs of activity there not a lot not the usual bearing in mind this is uh, Tuesday so it's the middle of the week but of course one must also bear in mind that kids aren't in school and there are a lot of people who uh, are on furloughs and not on their jobs of course that'd be all the more reason not to spend money right Very interesting. A lot of dog walking. Um, so it's very interesting. And by the way, I didn't have to take a ticket to get, come in here to the parking area, so I've never experienced that. Where to next, Paul? Are you ready to go home? How about ice cream? Where are we going to get ice cream? All right, Paul uh, Paul has made his decision. We're going to go to the Burger King in Seaside to get a shake. And um, yes, that's probably not a good choice for him diet-wise, but we're trying to... Um, trying to do as much as we can to find a normal rhythm uh, of life and uh, if that's what does it for him then uh, that's what we're going to go along with. A Raft of Wandering Otters, thank you for joining us. We will see you in the next one and I hope everybody's staying safe. And not being a Duke of Earl. And not being a Duke of Earl. You want to explain that? What What's Duke of Earl? It means you wear a mask. Yeah, uh, he um, he's kind of triggered by people wearing masks. Um, he may maybe genetically gets that from me because I really don't like clowns because of the makeup and the face and oh yeah, hey, you're supposed to laugh and I don't really like that. Um, so uh, he's triggered by people wearing the mask. For safety and uh, he calls them Duke of Earl now can you explain that why do you call it Duke of Earl they look like old people they look like old people like your parents no with beards <laughs> okay so it kind of looks like a Van Gogh uh, beard and mustache kind of thing little by the way that's uh, our Van Dyke by the way I guess this is a goatee and the full little face thing like Freud or whatever is uh, is a Van Dyke somebody explained that to me once of course everybody calls this a goatee so anyway another fun fact I got a million of them See you in the next one. Thank you for joining us. What do you say, Paul? Thank you for joining us. See you in the next one. My name is Creepy. Good old Dust Bowl. Even though it's closed. It's well, it, it is and it isn't. They have uh, they have a little kiosk out there that they're dispensing beer from. I'm pretty sure they did anyway. Do you like to do the girl? Oh boy. I hope. That's going to be real.